This episode of The Bill and Callie Show is brought to you by Tiger Plumbing. Whether you need to replace a faucet, overhaul your sump pump, or desludge your drains, call Tiger Plumbing. Well, welcome, and with us today we have a very important guest, uh, Gary Gurman, who is the Porter County Prosecutor. Um, Gary, we want to welcome you to our show, first of all. Thank you. Uh, just some background behind Gary. He was, prior to being elected for the second time as Porter County's Prosecutor, he was a practicing defense attorney for 46 years. So uh, he, he's quite experienced, I would say, in the uh, practice of law. And uh, you know, and again, as I've always said, I think Porter County, and, and just not from my perspective, is very lucky to well, have you in right. a seat. In fact, I, I feel like I'm the one that's blessed. And and I will quote, quote Judge Harper as saying, Porter County is in good hands. Well, thank so, you. And thank you. That we comes, hope so. That comes from uh, Judge Harper herself. So, and, and that's quite. Uh, quite interesting comment from a judge to talk about a defense attorney in such a matter. <laughs> so, uh, but Gary, let's ask you some questions. Sure. And uh, first of all, oh, gosh, now you're in the seat. You know, we've talked to you, um, you know, just uh, in person, uh, not on air or anything, um, you know, while you're running for office. And, and um, you know, and that in itself was quite a feat to unseat a Republican in a Republican county that has held the office for three terms. And here you come uh, along as a Democrat who has never run for anything in uh, since 80 or a long time. 70, yeah. a long time, and you unseat the incumbent. Um, but there are a lot of things, issues surrounding that that we won't go through here, but uh, tell us what it's like now that you have the seat. <clears throat> I have to tell you, I love my job. I love coming to work every day. I don't even think of it as work uh, to come here every day. And I love the people I work with. We, we have a great staff, the lawyers, our assistants, um, our victim advocates. Um, I just love every one of them. Great. Yeah, and, and I think they're fortunate to have you as a boss. Uh, Thank it's, you. Uh, so tell us it, because um, when it typically, when a new elected official comes in, they want to bring who they feel is going to be the team member. And so you did quite a few staff changes here. So do you want to talk about who you brought with you? Sure. Um, the chief deputy is Armando Salinas. Uh, he began his career in Lake County as a deputy prosecutor. And for the last four or five years, he was on assignment uh, to the U.S. Attorney's Office in Hammond. So he was really being paid by Lake County, but working in the U.S. Attorney's Office. So a lot of experience uh, trial-wise. And um, I really wanted to bring someone outside of our system, so to speak, so that we got a fresh look at what we were doing. Um, I brought uh, Mary Ryan, who is uh, just a great lawyer from uh, Stark County, where she was the chief deputy. She began her career also in Lake County. Uh, she is an amazing lawyer. I, I always tell people I forgot what a great lawyer that she is. Um, and then uh, Rebecca Butendorf. She had been here before for a short time, uh, and then I uh, went to LaPorte County for a while. Another really uh, good and experienced trial lawyer herself. Um, yeah, so I mean, we're, we're just really kind of lucky to have them. Most recently, we had to fill a juvenile prosecutor spot um, because uh, Tim Harmon had left to become a, <coughs> excuse me, a referee in Lake County. And he'd been doing that for like 15 years. So we brought in uh, John Holman, who has a been an Indiana State Police officer for like the last eight or nine years, uh, decided to go to law school, so he's working full-time, going to school part-time, wow. raising a family, <laughs> and uh, just passed the bar in May. Uh, so um, Gets the multitask for yes, award. Yes, <laughs> right. So what I wanted to try to do is to create a staff where there were really experienced lawyers, some lawyers who had been lawyers for maybe only three or four years, and then brand new lawyers. Hmm. So we have that. Yeah, uh, from us great. to Portage. And here in Valparaiso, we have a great mix of uh, young lawyers, older lawyers, uh, men, women, all different uh, backgrounds. So we have a real, I think, uh, way of um, sharing our cases and looking at them from different perspectives and different, um, different experiences. 
Now, with that, of course, you came in uh, having to change some things around because, again, you uh, you wanted to make some changes as far as how things were handled, how cases were handled. Do you want to talk to us a bit about some of the policy changes that you've made to yes, the office? Yes, the word policy to me is almost like a four-letter word because if, a, if we start talking about policies in cases, it seems it, it has a tendency to become almost black and white and our cases are not black and white. So if anything, I wanted to make sure that we're looking at the cases on an individual basis. Um, I mean, we could have a .08 operating while intoxicated case, but if we ask more questions, we find out it's really a heroin case. Um, we could have um, you know, somebody who's 45 years old who shoplifts makeup or a $10 item. You know, we need to look behind that to find out exactly what, what's going on. So um, I guess one of the things I wanted to do is just differentiate our nonviolent uh, drug-related cases and separate those from our serious cases uh, where we just have to protect ourselves um, and you know, people have to go to prison. Right. And dovetailing into that um, and how you handle certain cases, and you, and you brought up an example of a drug case, um, there are two courts here in Porter County, as there are in courts elsewhere in, in the other counties, the, the uh, drug court and the veterans court. Uh, do you want to talk to us a bit about how your office interfaces with those courts? Sure. There's actually a third court. It's a brand new court that began shortly after the first of the year. We call it a restoration court, but it's a mental health court. Oh, so um, it's potentially those dual diagnosis cases where maybe there's a drug problem, but underlying that are some severe mental health issues. So we have a court set up for that uh, as well. And again, it's a problem-solving court. So if a person is in that court and they complete their program and their counseling and do well, uh, pass all their drug tests, uh, they get their cases dismissed. And that's true of the drug court as well as, veter as the veterans court. I've always said for years the best thing that we probably do uh, overall in our criminal justice system here is the Veterans Court. Um, same, same principle, complete the program, you get your case dismissed, but we're dealing with veterans and I feel like we owe them that for the service that they gave to us. Uh, they're returning with many times post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, so we're able to deal with and help them you know, if they get into trouble. So we, I encourage that as much as possible. It has to be the right person. Uh, I don't want to take too much of a risk uh, with, some, with some of those people uh, who are candidates, but for the most part I want to encourage that where, where possible. Yeah, and, uh, and that is important because what brought them to this place may have been what they've experienced in Afghanistan or Iran, uh, and those are horrible experiences. And, uh, but unfortunately they come back and having to deal with those in the wrong way and and what better way to handle that than saying we're going to help you? Absolutely. And, and so that uh, it's just no I, doubt about it. I always try to go to the graduations. Uh, they read their letters. Uh, somebody reads a letter for them. We try to invite even the arresting officers to come uh, and see, you know, the uh, the result of the choice that they made to arrest somebody that actually turned into be just a, a great thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's great. And we're glad to see that happening. Um, now, going through, it's been about six months, about to start your seventh month in office. Um, is there anything that you can point to? And I realize this is early, so and, and there may be nothing, but a, a remarkable change that you as the prosecutor were able to make and say, you know, even though this has been six months, this, this has I changed. I would say we're at the beginning of a lot of things. I think when I came into the office, um, I think there was probably a great deal of distrust because I was coming uh, to the office from being a criminal defense lawyer. So it's been a matter of me building bridges with uh, the police, very, you know, all of our police departments. Just at breakfast with the Indiana State Police this morning. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I just wanted them to get out and get to know me so that um, we establish a good working relationship and uh, I learned to trust them and they learned uh, to trust me. Uh, I would say, too, I think just the way that our, our staff works together, um, I've had to make some changes that I think uh, will help facilitate everyone working together, where we become, I say team, but I, I think that's the wrong word, where we become a family. Mm -hmm. And I inc and include the, the law enforcement community in that as well. Um, there are things that we may face in the future that um, 
you know, we'll have to have a strong bond to be able to get through it uh, together. I always say, you know, people don't work for me, they work with me. Hmm. Just out of curiosity, was breakfast at Dunkin' Donuts? It was not. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just ask. <laughs> no, it was at the Chili Bowl. <laughs> Kelly, you're going to get us in trouble. Yeah. I have could, to go there. We could get a ticket on the way home that no, we'll have no, to be no, back no. in here for. And I won't take care of it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy, so that's great. You know, one, and, and we, we talked about that, um, is trying to create these relationships with law enforcement. Um, and you know, one of them, of course, I, I, is our very good friend uh, Dave Reynolds, and uh, who I actually I got to tell this story because uh, when we first met, uh, you guys looked like brothers, <laughs> and I could have sworn you. Were, I've never met him up to that point, and I could have sworn you were Dave Reynolds, and uh, and and you introduced myself. And my next comment was. Oh, wow, you're you're just too nice to be a lawyer. <laughs> and then, but then you've not seen the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I've never been in court with you, so yeah, I've heard about those instances. That, that, that every time I talk to someone, yeah. he's a the nice evil guy. Thing. Well, you haven't seen him in court, and so um, yeah, and that that is something interesting because Dave has and and uh, and you know we just interviewed Jay Berkey who has done remarkable things, and, and uh, we interviewed him for sole purposes, a congratulatory for winning the award, right. the uh, national award national for, award for uh, Chaplain of the Year. Chaplain of the Year, yes. amazing, uh, amazing. But you know, well it, deserved. Oh, it yes, speaks absolutely. to a lot of the problems that this county, you know, Sheriff Reynolds and, and with the assistance of uh, Jay, who's had some remarkable impact on the inmates, have put together these programs because things weren't getting solved and people were ending up that needed help and so it was a byproduct of what was going on at right that time. I think what's really changed if I look back you know from when I was the prosecuting attorney the first time is that by now virtually everybody has had someone in their family or close personal friend that's been adversely affected by addiction alcohol drugs whatever it is and you know, we're starting to learn uh, how to more effectively deal with those addiction issues, even if um, someone's in jail. And maybe that's the best place for them. I mean, I always tell the other lawyers, I have a, um, a rehabilitation program. It's at the Porter County Jail. Mm -hmm. And that's all due to Dave Reynolds and Jay Berkey. Um, okay. I mean, they're really, really on the cutting edge. And the whole idea yeah. is, I've asked this question, what's the, what are we doing? What is the purpose of the criminal justice system? And for those people, it's to try to do what we can so they don't get in trouble again. We don't have another case. They're not taking up space in the jail. Right. Um, statistically, I think the sheriff says if they graduate from our chemical dependency program, there's a 50% chance that they'll be successful. Um, if they do the therapeutic community, which is a little more intense, it's like 65%. If they are in the God pod, their success rate is 85%. So, I mean, we're, we're making progress, yeah. uh, the progress with, that we didn't make uh, 20, 30 years ago. Right. But we're like learning. Jay said, people forget that this is somebody's brother, somebody's sister, somebody's family member. These are your neighbors, the people yeah, in your right. neighborhood. It's somebody's account. child. I think, you know, at some point, we're almost like making parental decisions that the parents really weren't um, kind of expecting. It was kind of above their pay grade. Right. You know, what, what do you do if your child's addicted to heroin? You know, they don't, there's not a class on that. No. Uh, so we, I think we kind of provide some of that. It's really tough love sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I oppose release for people who have overdosed because I know it's one of two roads. They're going to get in more trouble or they're going to end up dead. They're going to overdose. Yeah. And one thing I'll state, and I, I've stated this multiple times, uh, when Dave invited me out to give a tour of the programs they're doing there. I witnessed a culture that I was shocked at, literally shocked at. The relationship between Dave and Jay and, and, and the inmates, just eye-awakening. It was um, a family. It, it, and I you know, heard Dave call out to one of the inmates, say, hey, Joe, did you call your wife today? And Joe said, oh, not yet. He said, well, you need to do that. You need to do it. <laughs> and I felt like it was a dad talking to his son, reminding him, you got to call your wife. And so it was kind of refreshing, but when you say, especially with this office, it's a family. Um, yeah, sure, you know, we need to work as a team, but it, it is a family concept, and you really do get that feeling. Yeah. Now, I, I've got to qualify this. This shouldn't give anyone um, uh, an idea of 
breaking the law to end up in jail and feel like they're going to be a part of a family. Of course, if you feel that dysfunctional, you need to go right ahead, right? Yeah. But, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that, that is something that was unique to me and impacted me on, on some of the great work that's being yeah, done. Yeah, that's, that's really a credit to our sheriff. Yeah. You know, I think he is just on the cutting edge of what's going on, uh, this movement that's going on across the country. Right. And, you know, I've often said, beside yourself, he, uh, I think Porter County is very blessed to have Dave Reynolds in that seat because it, he himself has won some national awards and is now sitting on the uh, school safety committee for a uh, national committee. Right. So As well he should be. Yeah, yeah uh, very good, a very cutting edge, uh, very cutting edge what they're doing there. So um, talking about some other things, one of the things I heard you talk about uh, prior to taking the seat is what you wanted to do is be, and this works hand in hand with your relationship with law enforcement, is uh, go in and help them out in their investigations and help them out in their interrogations to make sure that not only that the pro it was being done properly, but also, and this comes from your defense background, to make sure that they're not violating the rights of the perpetrator or the suspect, I should say, because that could end up bad for everybody. Right. And do you want to talk about your philosophy in that? And what you're, yeah, what you're I, I mean, my, uh, my conversations with our staff at the right at the beginning is that <clears throat> we need to be available. I mean, we're the lawyers. You know, we know the answer to the legal questions, and uh, things happen pretty quickly uh, when the police are out making stops, talking to people, and conducting interrogations. There's always something different. It's never the same, which is part of the challenge and part of the fun. But we're available, we have an on-call list. So on every day of the month, one of our lawyers is on call. And the police have those numbers. And if they can't reach that person, they go to the next person. Um, I just had a conversation, as I was telling you, with the state police this morning. Uh, if there's a murder case, uh, I won't be there. You know, call me. If I don't answer my phone, come to my door. Knock on my door, I'll come. Um, just, it's, it's helpful for a lot of reasons. But yeah, we just need to be there. We're their lawyers, um, and that's part of our job. Right, and and uh, and so that is kind of refreshing to talk to someone because you know, everyone views the prosecuting attorney as always the bad guy. But you know, a lot of times it's working for their best interest to make sure that everything happens in the correct manner. Right. My my philosophy is if we do what we think is right in the long run, we'll be just fine. Right. Yeah. Um, now, talking about that, um, in and this is something that uh, I've heard you speak about as well your personal involvement about cases that come in. Now I realize you can't handle every one. Uh, I, there's got to be, even for Porter County, a large amount that comes through this office. But what is your personal involvement day to day from when it comes in, you get notification that there was arrest um, and you know, a court date has been set up. What, what is your involvement from that? First, I have my own uh, court call. So on Monday morning when we come to work, we'll give our best. We'll make mistakes, uh, but we're going to do the best we can. All right. And a lot of people ask me why I'm such a fan. Well, I've got um, two daughters that live in Chesterton and uh, three soon to be four grandchildren oh, and two okay. son-in-laws. And, and lots uh, of friends. <laughs> and you know, I, yes. I've got to say, I feel safer that you're in your seat. Oh, thanks. And, yeah, uh, that's what I, I want, so that people can live their lives and enjoy uh, one another and enjoy. We have a great community, and I'm going to keep it that way. Beautiful community. Uh, yes, right. we do. Everything Chester yeah. and down the Cowboys. Oh, gosh. It's just a just beautiful the, Like I said, all over Porter County. Yeah, and it's a unique community, everything from farming down to industrial. So, right. Gary, I can't thank okay. you enough for thank to making so some much. time no, to being on our show. And we appreciate it. Good luck uh, to your staff and you. And uh, you got quite a task ahead. And, and uh, uh, the best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for you. having me. And Bye. goodbye for now. This episode of The Bill and Callie Show is brought to you by Tiger Plumbing. Whether you need to replace a faucet, overhaul your sump pump, or desludge your drains, call Tiger Plumbing.